started applying for PhDs, I used to get rejections after rejections after rejections. But then I changed three simple things in my application process. And just within a couple of months, I got multiple offers, including from Oxford University. And I didn't even have top grades. So by the end of this video, you will know how to dramatically increase your chances to get a PhD position at your dream university. So let's start. Tip number one, don't apply to PhD programs. Now, when you apply for a PhD, you can apply for a single project or you can apply to PhD programs. Now, PhD programs are a bundle of single projects and you only have to submit one application to be considered for all of them. And when I started applying to PhDs, I thought this is perfect. I will only tackle these programs because it means that I can apply to so many different PhD projects without having to put a lot of work into it. And I thought that my chances to get to an interview are actually quite high because there are so many projects. But actually, I was so far from the truth because I learned that so many people have the same thought. So the competition is extremely high. I applied to some of the Cricks programs, which I think had about 10 projects. And I received the email twice that they have over 1,500 applicants, which is why they're taking longer. So if you imagine that, 1,500 different people applying to 10 PhD projects. The chances of you just getting into an interview is extremely low, especially if you're a student like me who doesn't have the top CV or the top grades. I mean, if you are a student who has amazing grades, who has amazing CVs and who feels like you definitely have a chance with the programs, obviously go for it. Like I'm not here to discourage you, but if you're a student like me who graduated with an upper second, maybe better, maybe worse, and you don't have that much work experience, then going for a PG program gives you very low chances to actually be successful. So when I actually shifted my focus from PhD programs to PhD projects, that's when I actually started receiving interview invites. If you apply to a single project, obviously it is a bit more work applying to various single projects, but at the same time, there are also less people applying to them. Definitely not thousands. Usually it's more 10 to 50 people applying to one project. So your chances to at least get to an interview stage are much higher. And because you're applying to just one project for one application, you can really tailor your application, which means that you can make the professor feel like you want this specific project, which gives you a huge benefit. Because in this regard, if you're applying to a single project, the professor is often usually also looking for your potential as a student and the type of person that they want to have rather than just experience and grades. Whereas if you're applying for these programs, there are so many people applying, they kind of need to have some numbers to select these people out. So the grades and your experience will have a much bigger weight. So my second tip, which not enough people do, but is so important, is to reach out to your supervisors before you apply to a PhD project. Not enough people do this, but this can be really the reason why a supervisor can be persuaded to take you as a PhD student if you don't have the top grades or the top experience. And that is because you can give them a first impression of you before they can even reject you. And you can really showcase your personality, you can showcase your motivation, you can showcase your knowledge and that you did your research on this professor. But apart from making a good impression, it can actually also directly help your application. So when I had my meeting with my supervisor before I even applied, I asked her what is the type of student that she's looking for in her PhD student. And she said that the most important thing for her is the motivation. She said that skills are not that important to her because if the person is driven and motivated enough, they will easily learn the skills that are required for the PhD. So I knew for her, motivation is the most important thing, which means that for this specific application, I heavily emphasize how motivated and how driven I am, why I want to do this specific project, why I want to work in this specific lab. Now, if you ask a different professor, they might have said, oh, for me, the most important thing is the experience. So in that case, you can really focus on your experience in the application, what you've learned from your work experiences, what module linked to this PhD projects that you had during your university, etc. So this is such a life hack, but also you can actually reach out to professors who are not currently advertising a PhD project. And there is a chance that they will create a PhD project for you. 
And I know this because this happened to me. When I was looking for PhD projects, I felt like there weren't a lot of projects that I was very interested in. But I found this one professor in the Max Planck Institute in Germany and I really liked his research. So I just reached out to him and I just introduced myself saying that I really like his research and if he's thinking about hiring a fully funded PhD student soon. Now he got back to me and he said he's not currently advertising one, but he is interested in offering a position to me. But first we need to have an official interview and a meeting and he needs to get to know me. And we had an interview online. I think he quite liked me as a potential student and he invited me to Germany to meet all of his lab members, to talk to me in person. I had to give a presentation. And then in the end, he actually offered me a PhD position. So this one random email of me reaching out to him resulted in a PhD offer. Now he was not the only professor I sent an email out to. I sent an email to four professors two of which led to interest, two said that they're not offering anything at the moment. So this doesn't 100% work all of the time, but it's definitely an option that you should consider. If you know a professor whose work you really like, reach out to them. Honestly, it can be such a game changer for you and not many students do this. Hence, the professors really like this initiative. Tip number three is to tailor your personal statement. Now, I've read a lot of personal statements from friends and families and also from my website. And I am always surprised by how general personal statements are. If you're writing a personal statement and you're not applying to a PhD program, but to single project, you want to make the professor feel like you specifically just want this project. So everything you're mentioning in your personal statement somehow needs to relate to this specific PhD project. So for example, if you want to do a PhD in cancer research about the protein P53 and you had a couple of modules in your bachelor's about cancer research, you should mention these modules and you should mention what you've learned about P53 and why you are interested in P53. You should mention some of the papers that you've read from this specific professor. Also, when you say that you are motivated or you are a driven person, always come with examples. You don't want to have these empty sentences of, hi, my name is Lena, I'm a highly driven person and I want to apply for this PhD. This doesn't mean anything, but instead you should show examples that showcase that you're actually driven. For example, you were part of a society to organize some science events, or you've presented at a conference, all of these things that show that you have to put in extra work that showcase that you are a driven person rather than just saying that you are one. Now I am going to post a video soon this summer on how to write a really good personal statement. So if you're interested, make sure to subscribe. But also if you've ever wondered what it is actually like to do a PhD and if a PhD is actually the right choice for you, then make sure to check out this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.